that uh, somebody came in and said, you're the periodic table lady. And that's because that's been my thing now. I write a lot of stuff, but I've been deciding to write a poem for every element in the periodic table. And I have uh, three short ones here for you. And I have no idea. We'll see how this goes. This first one is number 61, and it is Prometheum. The end of the world just passed. Everyone thought because the Mayans ended the calendar at the 2012 winter solstice, that meant the world was ending right then and there. We all waited with bated breath in confused anticipation, not knowing if we should feel a reserved, somber morning, a sick, ignorant, religious end of days excitement, or if we should feel nothing at all. Did you know that Prometheus was the titan in Greek mythology who stole fire from Mount Olympus and brought down to humans? <laughs> Maybe that fire would be the end of the times. Maybe Prometheus symbolizes both the daring and the possible misuse of mankind's intellect. Maybe the Maya calendar wouldn't do us in, but our own ignorance and abusive ways would. Maybe that end of the world feeling we get is from the rare decay of others that it only produces the very unstable you, Prometheum. But the thing is, despite your issues, despite all the ways that you may do us in, from radioactivity to the emitting of x-rays, we've learned with just a little protection, we'd be safe through the next calendar cycle. So, now we're better prepared, and you'll be the ones wondering about the end of time. Thanks. This one is number 116. I think it was originally called Unum Hexium. Um, this is called the Memoriam. For so many years, you've gone by another name, and then you seem surprised when people don't know who you are. You've wanted to be known, and I've known you for years, but I've noticed that as time passes, as you grow, you move further and further away. You've tried for so long, and over the years, in our efforts to synthesize, we've had some successful reactions, some failures to react, and I know that some attempts have not even been made yet. But at times, these attempts at fusion with you just seem far too hot for me to handle. And really, I assume they're too hot for you, too. Maybe your half-life is just so short that I'll never know what to do with you. And I'll never know what you'll do next. In our past four creations, this quantum tunneling has been something that I don't think I can take any longer. And I'm sorry, but you're insufficiently unstable. You were just so unstable. And you never let me confirm the true weightiness of your soul. So... Maybe you should go your way, and I should go mine. I, I know your possible chemistry, and I know you want to share your soul with the entire world. I know this, and I'm sorry. I've just grown tired, and I know you'll continue to grow without me. So yes, you should go your way. And I should go mine. Maybe one day you will truly find what you and the world so desperately needs. Thanks. You didn't realize you were getting sciencey stuff. Thank you very much. This last one here is PB, is number 82 on the periodic table. This is lead. <laughs> I walked into the bedroom, opened the closet door, pulled out the cardboard box, then opened it to pull out a pistol case. I set the pistol case down, opened it, saw the unloaded 22 and the filled magazine. I held the magazine filled with lead bullets, reminding myself that it was always an option. There's so much more weight in those lead bullets. They feel heavy in my hand. Then again, 
Lead aprons to protect you from x-rays are heavy, too. <laughs> Lead is so common. It's used, been used for like thousands of years from the Bronze Age as it was pushing the Roman economy. The name for plumbing even comes from the Latin plumba because lead pipes were used. <laughs> and after all these years, lead's not even used in lead pencils. <laughs> that right itself is just a lead mock-up, I guess. <laughs> because lead comes from the decay of uranium and sometimes could be radioactive. But still, it can protect you from things like x-rays or even nuclear contamination. So, yeah, it can protect you. And it could also be the missile in an instrument of death. As I said, these bullets are so heavy in my hands. Thank you. I'm not here to take from your open mic and on up here, but I run one on every other Wednesday. It's not on this week, so if you want to know anything about that, come on, bother, bother me anytime for the Cafe Gallery. Thank you. Science poetry, those are my very cool. <laughs> um, okay, so next up, oh, and I should introduce uh, my lovely co host, Rich Experience. Smile, smile, look pretty. <laughs> 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 Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. 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 Hi, of every month, and uh, he helps me with the sound because I'm not technical. <laughs> um, physical reality is not my thing. Anyway, um, so I have Rich. And then we have Diane, our bartender. So please buy drinks from Diane. And uh, we were very grateful to uh, Clem Jaska, the owner of Phyllis's Musical Inn, for letting us. I know, but I'll be nice anyway. <laughs> say uh, that we like having him here, or we like being